Today our study is titled Perplexity to Praise and we are taking our context from Habakkuk three short chapters describing quite well our times the key word of Habakkuk key verse comes in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 the just shall live by their faith this has been the was the rallying cry of the protestant reformation so it is also found in hebrews and galatians and romans recorded from habakkuk chapter 2 uh, so the opposite of this is the unrighteous will try to live by their might but the righteous will live by their faith and whom do you think will win the battle so let's uh, ask the lord to direct us lord these are perilous times troublous times and habakkuk was perplexed and he felt the surroundings were overwhelming economics politics injustice sociological distress and we live in similar times so that we will get a good understanding from habakkuk how the lord focused habakkuk's attention on what the lord is able to do in jesus name we pray i am proposing to ask some of you to read uh, so nadun will you read the first first slide which is habakkuk chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 Are you able uncle, to read I'm, it? I'm, uh, on the uncle, uncle. I'll read it. Yes. How long, O oh Lord, I will I call for help? And you will not hear. I cr- so this is the dilemma of the righteous. When trouble goes on and wickedness goes on, he thinks the Lord is not hearing. O oh Lord, will I call for help? You will not hear. i cry, cry out to you violence yet you do not save but then we know in the trouble the lord is calling out to his people as well and it is prudent to ask whether lord is saying i am calling and you are not hearing uh, so habakkuk says why do you make me to see iniquity cause me to look on wickedness of course we know the lord didn't create the wickedness but habakkuk feels that all the responsibility of containing this wickedness uh, must be with the lord destruction and violence are before me strife exists and contention arises so i want you to just consider when there have been so much of pressure on parents and children how has the pressure affected you habakkuk is completely consumed by the outside how has been your inside what uh, what has been your sense in with this pressure outside increasing every day a uh, little reprieve now uh, how 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 if you ask yourself when the pressure outside has been increasing how has been my insight did my insight quite parallel the boiling pot melting pot outside uh, you would have heard some examples you know when pressure increases iron sharpens the iron then when pressure increases there's another saying that uh, the every pot Uh, when once it's baked by the potter in the oven it's put back to give a glazing with a certain application on the pot so some people have compared a trouble that comes as glazing on the pot or did you crack up did the melting pot outside come to your inside or is what's the purpose of done in my life uh, in the trouble 
is there a God of grace and glory working in the trouble? That comes from 1 Peter 4, 17. That in the trouble, spirit of grace and glory will rest upon us. We will look at those scriptures. I'm just giving a summary. In the trouble, God of all grace will strengthen you, establish you, perfect you after you have suffered a while. So trouble outside is often becomes God's instrument. Uh, God, through all things, God works for good to them that love him and are called according to his purposes. So we will see how the Lord brings his Old Testament prophet, Old Testament saint, to think alongside him. Now I asked you to send some questions out of each slide. So if you have made some questions, please stop me and ask those questions at each slide. Uh, so I asked a question myself with the first slide. How has the outside turmoil affected your inside? you need to sort of consider that a little. Uh, so I, I'm looking again at slide one. Uh, Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. This is the sense uh, Habakkuk had that wicked are winning. He felt even he's under siege, though a prophet, though the prophet the time that he's under siege how have the how have god's children felt during this time therefore justice comes out perverted any questions that you raise at this habakkuk's alarm yes anyone likes to speak up contribute habakkuk's alarm how will you how, how will you sort of uh, share experience or Sri Lal, what would you say with the turmoil outside how has been the saints inside maybe I'll ask for some responses a little later you can I hope to sort of uh, bring up some yes Sri Lal, you can talk yeah uh, the sense of uh... Sometimes a sense of hopelessness that we have been praying and praying and praying, but nothing yes. seems to be happening. Seems to be yes. moving very slowly. We yes. are still looking at the light at the end of the tunnel, but not yes. seeing it. Yes. Yes, so that the righteous might feel where are our prayers going? That's exactly what uh, Habakkuk cast. Why are you silent? Why are you causing me to look upon this? So slide number three, I bring back Habakkuk's responses. Why are you silent, Lord? They might have been our responses. Slide number two, yes. What do you, why do you allow evil to triumph? And then we might have hoped that trouble will blow away somehow. Time will solve the problem. Then we might have been tempted to hide from the trouble and behave as if it will not affect us. Hope trouble will not trouble me. Then others might have got enraged with the times as the protesters were enraged and might have thought of fighting the trouble. So this could have been any other responses you have felt, perceived, like to add? Yes. Then, of course, the obviously the right thing is seek God's ways of resolution. In the trouble, what does God speak? So we want to take the position that God speaks louder than the trouble. Lord, this evening, by our reflection today, we want to get to the point of hearing you clearer, louder, more intensely than the clamor and the clatter of the trouble. Or the trouble is real, but you are more real. 
So next slide, I think I call it stage two. Uh, God's response. Uh, basic, I'm not going to uh, give God's response in detail. I just summarized it. What was God's response? He said, you ask for justice because you are complaining about the wickedness. Habakkuk was complaining about wickedness in Jerusalem and Judah. Time would have been about 620 BC before Chaldeans or the Babylonians invaded Jerusalem and Judah. Judah was terribly backslidden. Uh, so God says, you are asking for uh, just deserts for your countrymen. Yes, that's a possible uh, avenue of dealing with the problem. I will send a nation more evil than your countrymen and punish them. That's what basically God's response to Habakkuk was. If there's no one in the gap, wrath will breach through the gap. So that comes from Ezekiel also standing in the gap. God looks for a man to stand in the gap. And from Isaiah, so that the Lord will clad himself with zeal and attend on the problem with drastic consequences. That's the way of judgment. But the Lord is taking time with Habakkuk to help him to be part of the solution because Habakkuk is prescribing judgment. And the prescriber is going to change through this dialogue. Uh, so God told, God's response was, okay, yes, there is a very immediate solution available. Chaldeans are terrible fellows. I can send them very quickly to judge the wickedness of Judah and Jerusalem. Then Habakkuk was very alarmed. He was surprised at this suggestion of the Lord. Habakkuk 1.13 your eyes are too pure to approve evil, and you cannot look on wickedness with favor. Why do you look with favor on those who deal treacherously? Why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? Habakkuk's this response was about the Chaldeans, whom God said, okay, you are complaining about wickedness. I can match this thing by sending some more wicked fellows to deal with the wicked fellows. Is that what you want? So Habakkuk quickly backtracked and said, no, 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 no. That's not how I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you will find a better solution than I can think of. Uh, so in our local situation of political trouble, economic trouble, you know, all the time people have been asking judgment for politicians, fraudsters, corruptors, and expecting protesters to bring a solution. Uh, now we know where we are. God will have to work a solution through the prayers of the righteous. And we can see day by day, our prayers are getting answered. Yesterday, there were two court decisions that helped to keep tab of the government. Court behaved as good umpires, impartial umpires. So as we pray, we learn to pray specific prayers, uh, governance prayers, what should be while we stand in the gap and what is the process. I hope you understood that this slide four, uh, Habakkuk quickly backtracked and said, no, 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 I'm not asking such a destruction for my people. I'm only asking that you will somehow correct them. Stage three, God gets Habakkuk's attention. I will, so Habakkuk says now, he realized this, in this dialogue, he's missing something, he's talking more than God. So we must learn when we come to him with a problem, a personal, about a child's future or our health or our financial situation or the country's thing. When we come to him, 
we can't be talking more than him and arrive at a situation. He knows all what we are telling him, but we are quite free to tell him, cast our burden upon him, discuss with him, but we have to listen. So in this troublous time, I find from about 9.30 to about 11.15, I just listen. I just stretch out on the ground and I just listen. Of course, I, I have that opportunity because I don't have to go to regular work. But even those who go to regular work, you have to increase your listening time. That's how Habakkuk came to that conclusion. I will stand on my guard post, station myself on the rampart, and I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me. So this guard post and rampart must have been some familiar place Habakkuk uh, got, uh, got together with the Lord. So in your home also, you must have your particular prayer place. Certainly you pray together at the family prayer time, but there has to be a place where you hear the Lord in stillness when he wants to really get hold of you. So this Everyone has to practice the stillness time. After complain and a bit of a rumble, uh, Habakkuk said, obviously I'm missing something, Lord. Let me get to my guard post. Let me get to my rampart and keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. So he was expecting some correction to come. So understanding dawns on Habakkuk that God has another approach. If God can find a man who will be God's watch post for the change to be implemented, this seems to be God's method. Uh, any other questions that you have at this point of the reflection? Anything that I might have missed, you felt I should clarify a little more? You may have a thought to add, please add. Is there anything you like to? Dinesh, is there anything that you like to contribute to the where we are? Yes, I think we, as you pointed out, brother, we have to listen to God's direction very carefully. Yes. Yes. Okay. So after the turmoil and the complaint, Habakkuk comes to this conclusion. Then let's see in the next slide how, how it goes. Uh, God is diagnosing for Habakkuk the situation from a God perspective. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. Vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal and it will not fail. So the understanding is God is working out a process which he calls the vision, which is particularly the prophet's call to hear and listen and reveal to others. Now we know in the Old Testament, God worked with one prophet, but in the New Testament, every Christian is to keep watch and keeping watch causes us to receive his light and then for us to scatter that light, shed that light uh, in our immediate vicinity uh, to people who work with us, our neighbors, relatives, friends, because it's a great opportunity there's a great spiritual need out there. Parents don't know exactly what to do. And the children are fumbling, particularly the 17-year-olds, wondering how, how do they do, what do they do. And some, think, some children think the way out is to go to another country and look for better opportunities. But parents know those children who are not engaged here 
will not engage in a constructive process merely because they go outside. In fact, it gets even worse. In troublous time, fleeing is a quick reprieve, but it's not a lasting remedy. Uh, so the Lord is saying this mission will work out. It is hastening towards the goal. It will not fail. The Lord has a parallel program. If there are enough people to receive his mission and understanding, that, that will overtake the trouble. It will take some time, depending on how many people enter the mission like Habakkuk. So we can see already for the uh, generation between uh, 17 to 24, the Lord is pouring out his spirit and getting hold of them. And I'm praying that we will have a, a good and effective spiritual window of ministry to parents who have children who are 14 to 17 because uh, the parents are non plus. Uh, kids are mm, maybe disturbed, maybe enraged, do something for us, but we have to disciple them. It's a difficult time for parents. We have to find discipleship. We have to find biblical basis more than ever to tell our children there are no quick reprieves out of the problem. Godliness has to work through. So if I may rephrase what God told Habakkuk 2, 3 to 4, for the vision. This Old Testament word is masa, the burden of the Lord. It's not just, just seeing a vision. It's how the Lord works through his revelation into the hearts and lives of his people. That's the context of vision in all those minor prophets, the burden of the Lord manifesting uh, for God's people to have light and clarity how to live in such a time as this. But the vision is yet for the appointed. So we are working with that appointed time. Ayat is the Hebrew. In the Greek, this is the kairos. So God thinks this is an appointed time for his people to get the better to overrule bad governance, that when the world fails, God thinks the church can succeed. So we are at a point when science has failed. Today, Bank of England says uh, inflation will hit, I think, 16% uh, at the end of the year. So they are also battling that. Israel is big rumpus in Gaza. Israel got a uh, Al-Qaeda or some, what's the other fellow who's in Gaza? Uh, Hamas, I think some commander was targeted and killed by a drone or whatever. Gaza began to attack Israel with rockets and the Iron Dome dispelled it. So there's a fr fire fracas. This is dangerous in the context of one week ago, Putin landed in Iran. And Erdogan, the Turkey chap, came to meet Putin in Iran. Now, as you know, Turkey is part of NATO. He has no business to go and see Putin. So you can see it's a real world of flux. And today, uh, Beijing has sent a whole naval parade in the Thai, Strait of Taiwan. There are military action protesting Nancy Pelosi's coming to Taiwan. So you can see how many trouble spots are brewing, but the vision is hastening towards the goal. Habakkuk 2.3, it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. So it'll take its time so it tarries, why? Till God's people get, God's people are taken hold of by the vision God has for the time. So all trouble, reversing trouble and better days coming, 
or what shall I say, in the midst of the trouble, God making his highway for his people, it's in our hands and in our operation of working with the vision of God. Wait for it, for it will certainly come, it will not delay. Behold, as for the proud ones, his soul is not right with him, but the righteous will live by his faith. So this is the battle, the righteous will live by his faith, the unrighteous will live by his might, trickery and fraud. Whom do you think will win in your battleground? which involves our children's future, grandchildren's future, our finances, our health, our daily sanity. Whom do you think will win? The righteous will live by his faith and the unrighteous will live by his might. And it's a very direct face-to-face -face confrontation. No Christian can avoid it now. So it is Good to be good soldiers of Christ, lay hold on eternal life, fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. This is the time. God has a vision for appointed time. How God will work it through. He is already working. We give up our pride and we live by faith. We give up our choices and increasingly agree to what the Lord can do. I took up this theme in my one of my daily posts. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged with the world. That's our privilege. So what, what does it mean? That is 1 Corinthians 11.31. What does it mean by if we judge ourselves? That is we get into God alignment without giving our flesh the benefit. Check, allowing the Lord to check our choices, options very strictly. That is what judgment for the believer, the Lord has left it in his hands. We don't want a bad government. We don't want Chaldeans to judge us. Because God has given the Holy Spirit to us to work with him about how we set our life on course for God's vision to have increasing Validity application through us. Any questions at this point? Anything that you can add? I have missed something. Please contribute. What I said was to make add your questions to every every slide then you can take up that question as an observation or as a, as a question. So slide number seven. What does it mean for the just to live by his faith? Wait on God to get God perspective. Then we have already said where we have been living by our might, by our decisions, um, by our choices, we have to allow the Lord to discern us. So I find in the melee of many Christians getting involved in commenting on how bad the politicians are, we might be losing on that internal exercise of judging ourselves, which gives us great peace. Judging ourselves. God works peace when we judge ourselves. Uh, we might have to give up our understanding and endless quibbling. What does it mean in these times for the just shall live by faith? Give up quizzing God, live daily by faith in what God can do and how God will do. God works through the faith of the righteous. This is what God is telling Habakkuk. Habakkuk if you ask for judgment for the wicked, everybody gets into a mess. But if the righteous will live by their faith, allowing me to work out intervention, then my will will be done in your life. I will deal with the wicked, give them the best chance for transformation, 
I will keep my people in their destiny. So I have to appeal to you that the Christianity that worked for us when world was normal, economy was normal, politics was normal, will not work now. We have to govern our plot. This is not a new theme for us. But maybe for the last six months, we were so hassled with the protest and the struggle and the outside things. Obviously, it did what it could do. Now the hard work is with us. How the righteous will live by their faith, making a pathway for ourselves and others. So our worship, our witness, our work matters more than ever before. And to work as a body of Christ together, uh, this is the vision I often have. Everyone has been given a staff, the little shepherd staff you have for your family, you have for your work, you have for your finances. The Lord is drawing the staffs together from... Uh, am I visible or not? I'm visible here. Yeah. The Lord is drawing the every Christian staff is taken up by the Lord into his staff. So he's drawing the Christians. They are shepherdly staff and they are shepherdly work in their family and in their neighborhoods of work and so on. So the body politic is dismembered. Horrible, fraudulent, corrupt practices, irresponsible behavior, and demonic invocations. But when Christians take up their staff for their part, then the Lord is able through the staff of the Christian, through the shepherd staff of every family, to keep the nation scattering. So the wicked shall live by their might, scatters the nation, pulls it apart. But the righteous shall live by their faith, and they draw the staff of Christ together. This is the only way the nation will heal. So we can see for the last 10 days or so, our prayers have found focus. Uh, new president's 20-point speech was well received. Even the Aragala Karwa said, uh, 12 out of what he said is what we have been saying. And very reasonable people in the opposition are wanting to join together. So there is a hope arising, but we have to keep the practice of faith. The just shall live by their faith till God's vision runs over the land. Otherwise, God's vision, God's way of working cannot move through a nation. Till every Christian shepherd staff is given over, the rights he has for himself given over, and the body of Christ comes together. Now, so I often hear people saying the churches must unite. You know, the actual issue is each of us has to unite with the call of God we have. To get everybody to come on Sunday, to get everybody to listen to a Bible study, what a battle it is. So before we say churches must unite, in each assembly, every believer must unite with the fullness of the call God has. Then every believer in each assembly work to what all that assembly can do and is doing. This is how the disintegration is overcome by the integrated behavior of the Christians. Uh, this is a lot of work. And let's get on with the work that will heal the land. So we move to peace. We move peace. We work for reconciliation since the solution is in us. And prescribe Habakkuk was asked to be the medicine and the remedy. 
So often church prescribes and a lot of clips circulate and different, different WhatsApp groups discuss what governments should do. God may be telling us what I must do. So if every Christian can quieten down and say what Habakkuk say, I will listen to what the Lord has to speak to me. Uh, next slide takes a little uh, perspective, a little beyond the present scene. Before I go there, I will ask Dinesh to please lead us in prayer and tie up the thoughts so far. Can you lead us, Dinesh? Yeah, in yes, brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you show us, Lord, exactly how we will respond to this situation, Lord, and search our hearts, and Lord, and make walk in your highway of holiness, Lord. We pray, Father God, we pray that the externals will not affect us, Lord. Lord, but internally that we will take hold of you and your calling, and Lord, and walk a walk of faith, Lord, that you will lead us with your shepherd staff, Lord, and we pray, Father, that everywhere we go, we will carry your presence, Lord, and your peace and your presence, Lord, and help us, Lord, the call of God to take hold of what you have taken hold of us, Lord, and press on in this high call. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Then we find the Lord seemingly diverts a little in Hebrews 2, 13 to 14. The Lord, uh, we will find in many prophetic passages, while the prophet is engaging the present problem, God uh, takes him to the bigger picture that great turmoil is coming, that the world system is collapsing. If you read Isaiah 34, you will find it's a mess. And Isaiah 35 is a restoration of a highway for God's people. So at this point, the Lord takes Habakkuk, his servant, to see Habakkuk while you are in the present imbroglio, in present trouble. I want to show you the greater troubles that are yet to come and takes him to the eschatological panorama. So Habakkuk 2, 13 to 14. Uh, Habakkuk 2, 13 to 14. It is not indeed from the Lord of hosts that people toil for fire and nations grow weary for nothing. So on the one part, nations are growing weary and they are, uh, their timeline is running out. That's what all the events show. The time that nations had to do well is running out which means God calls his holy nation by supernatural means because the second exodus is getting nearer. So he will concentrate on getting his church ready for the second exodus. So on the one side, nations are getting weary. On the other side, Habakkuk 2.14 says, the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all earth be silent before him. So the Lord draws up the pattern of earth running down, but God's people's timetable running towards the decreed end of earth being filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. Uh, this is a dichotomy that we have to keep in mind that nations are running down. but his end time plan, the preparation of the bride of Christ is 
hotting up. Uh, therefore, when earthly calamities come, we have to get more heavenly minded because some of those calamities are ongoing till Christ comes again. So that aspect also, uh, the Lord tells Habakkuk. Then next slide. Uh, Habakkuk learns the mind of God. He turns from invoking justice to mercy. Prescriber of judgment becomes the remedy for mercy. Habakkuk 3.2, Lord, I have heard the report about you and I fear, O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known in wrath, remember mercy. That is his long lasting work. While nations tumble, Habakkuk got the prayer right. Revive your work where? In me, O Lord. Through me, O Lord. And make it known, manifest, that while wrath is working, you are working out mercy. Uh, I can't emphasize this enough. However, in prayer, we have to discover this. That this is not little wrath. This is end time wrath. And God has a vigorous program for glory and grace. Uh, my heart trembles. I feel quite weak, really, to carry this message. I'm, I, have, I have lost my form of confidence. I live not merely one day at a time. I live one hour at a time. Just hanging on to the Lord. Receiving grace. And then glory comes. Then grace comes. When glory comes, I am able to go and do something. And then I quickly hide in grace till I get strength for the next thing. It's a... Um, what shall I say? It's a difficult life. No, it's a life without my choices. I'm left to just lean on the Lord. This is what I am learning in this time. I just hang on to the Lord, lean on to the Lord. And when grace works to maybe three, four hours, I can function for about one hour in the call of God that I have to go out and do. This is how days are going on. Uh, so that doesn't mean everybody has to be indoors. It means even when you go to work, how to... Uh, hide yourself in grace, knowing that in wrath, God is working out mercy. So it's a, for every Christian, it's a humble walk. We can't speak with arrogance at all. We can't even speak with strength. We have to speak with dependence and say, Lord is working mercy in the wrath. Lord is working mercy in the wrath. So we thank God for our food on the table. We thank God for healing. Every little miracle is not little miracle. I found a document I have done collating some 12 or 14 healings. Amazing, outstanding healings that have happened during the past few years. So every little thing, let's just... Uh, know that in wrath time, God is working out mercy. This is a different track. This is a different relay. Those times have come. Sooner we enter into that mode, uh, more um, streamlined God, God can work with us. Yes. Uh, so, Lord, I have heard the report about you. I fear, O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of years. In the midst of the years, make it known in what remember mercy. So nothing is really worth a reaction. When you feel like reacting with strength, anger or disappointment or whatever, just hold it down and say to yourself, in wrath, the Lord is remembering mercy. Importance of hearing the Lord more than outside news. 
Habakkuk returns to reverence for God as his greatest influence. Revive your work in me. Revive your work through me. Revive your work for me. Habakkuk shifts to mercy as God's basis for reviving or giving life in the midst of decay, degradation, and death. Visitation of God's glory and scripture connects the past, present, and the future. Habakkuk 3, 3 to 4, God comes from Taman, Holy One from Mount Paran, that is Sinai glory. His splendor covers the heavens. Earth is full of his praise. His radiance is like the sunlight. He has rays flashing from his hand. There is the hiding of his power. Uh, at this point, we, before going on to Habakkuk, I'm interjecting the how Peter understands this. Maybe a few verses of Peter we can try. 1 Peter 4.14 if you are revived for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of God and of glory rests on you. So this is the, this is our equipment, spirit of God and of glory. For the time has come for the judgment to begin from the house of God. If it is, if it first begins from the us, what will be the end of those disobeying the gospel of God? So this perilous times, difficult times, is judging us not for bad but for good that we will get everything in our life on God's side. That is what God's judgment for his believer is getting everything. Uh, so during communion, this is what we do, and any other time, this is what we should be doing getting all our choices on God's side, and he will do this for us. 1 Corinthians 11.31, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. When we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. So in that chastening, Christ is formed in us. So my appeal to my brothers and sisters is, be in that chastened mode. We don't have to be with a long face, but we can be always knowing that hand of God is quite closely Mm, guiding us. Don't think it's a burden. Don't feel I have no choices. It is a time God is preparing mercy when wrath is breaking out. It's a time like no other. World has not known a time like this. Uh, so Peter speaks again, 1 Peter 5, 1. Sufferings and glory are two sides of the same coin. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partake also of the glory that is to be revealed. Peter also speaks to the younger, likewise younger ones, be subject to older ones, all being subject to one another, put on humility, for God resists proud ones, but he gives grace to the humble. Please remember, 10th uh, evening, we will be in camp and a lot of young people are expected to come. 11th, 12th till night we go on with camp. Uh, 13th, 14th, uh, camp will have Pastor Andrew Robertson and his son who is the youth pastor. Join in what you can. Uh, 13th, 14th, they'll be in Colombo. So this is Peter's perspective of when there is external turmoil. What might the Lord be doing in us? Spiritual warfare and victory during political turmoil is must. Next slide, slide number 13. 1 Peter 5, 6 to 8. Therefore be humble under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. So that's also happening. Casting your anxiety onto him for he cares for you. Be sensible and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, box about like a roaring lion, seeking someone he may devour. That also goes on. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 9 to 10. Next slide. Look to supernatural deliverance. Don't lean to natural explanations. In day-to-day -day things, look for supernatural help, strength. 
don't give natural explanations. This is a time the Lord is making supernatural help angels available. 1 Peter 5, 9 to 10, whom firmly resist in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions in the world are being completed in your brotherhood, but the God of all grace, he, he calling us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little, he will perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So this is what Habakkuk went through in his conversation with the Lord. We return to Habakkuk. Judgment of the wicked, but salvation for God's own. Next slide. In indignation, you march through the earth. In anger, you trample the nations. You went forth to the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed, you struck the head of the house of the evil to lay him open from thigh to neck. So spiritual warfare also goes on. Romans 16, 20, may the God of peace bruise Satan under your feet. Finally, Habakkuk comes to settlement, understanding how God works through the righteousness of his saints. Just shall live by their faith, while the proud, the wicked, try to gainsay by their might. So we know the end of the battle is Revelation 17, 13. Lamb and his people will overcome. Lamb and his people will overcome.